So as you know, uh, Dirk and, and Ronald are German and Austrian, so when they say 20 minutes, it's 20 minutes. Um, the German word, of course, is pünktlich, so we will be pünktlich. Um, so uh, the amount of information that we're going to share with you is uh, beyond the time constraint that we have available to discuss with you. So you're going to get um, a blitz tour uh, of the uh, material that we're going to share with you. Mike Carpite, CTO, and I, uh, and we'll actually make it available online. Um, it is a confidential briefing, so we'll, we'll share it with you, uh, and you can use your appropriate discretion uh, as to how it is you wish to share it with other stakeholders. Okay, so um, we have some things we want to accomplish today. Uh, first of all, introducing Digital Town. Some of you know us. We've had many one-on-one -on -one meetings this week, uh, and especially introducing this notion of a smart web. Uh, Smart London is a very interesting case study, uh, and we want to share about that uh, for, ver for geographies. Uh, and then for verticals, uh, I'll make brief mention of Smart Menu, not because you care about verticals, though some of you do, uh, but because it's important to see how the Smart Web is bringing together geographies and verticals into one cohesive vision. Um, then briefly could talk about how we can make the city TLDs compelling. I know that there are 51 city TLDs at the moment. Uh, in some years from now, it may be a thousand plus. Uh, so you're part of a pioneering movement to create city TLDs, and we want to make sure that the value proposition of operating them is as compelling as possible. Um, we want to talk a little bit about, uh, uh, as time allows during the course of this afternoon, about how other cities can secure their city TLDs, and then talk about the win-win vision for going forward. So just briefly on Digital Town, um, we're building what I refer to as a global smart city platform. Uh, any city can be a smart city. Uh, we own 23,000 dot city domains, uh, so we are the dominant registrant of the dot city, uh, city top level domain, uh, with the objective of empowering uh, any city to create a framework where citizens can share, connect, and transact all in one unified platform, all connected through single sign on. Uh, and part of what makes that possible is partnering with registries such as the folks represented here in this room. Um, we're uh, a pretty capable organization. The company is actually publicly traded uh, with operations uh, around the world. And one of our strategies has been to methodically partner with existing gatekeeping and influencing organizations such as the groups that you see referenced on the slides there, particularly um, the uh, trade associations. So a brief introduction to this notion of a digital town ecosystem there are essentially three parts. Uh, the smart city, which has certain definitions associated with it that I'll spare you about. Uh, a smart wallet, which is used by citizens as their point of entry to be able to access the services in a smart city. Uh, and then a smart web, and that's where you come in. Uh, we have, of course, the city domains, but really what we're talking about is making use of the new city TLDs. Now, a big part of what we're addressing here is how to make this accessible for all cities. This is not about doing tenders with each individual city, which would take an eternity if it could be done at all. Um, this is about creating a platform that is designed to be a co-creation vehicle that all of the stakeholders that are within a city can partner in the adoption and use of this framework. It is self-funded through transactions. Uh, it is shared across all stakeholders. And very significantly, it is distributed, and that's where domains play a critical role. Now, within a smart city, you'll see some terms that get used. Uh, these terms include city or smart governments, governance, economic development, civic engagement, digital inclusion, and smart tourism. The digital town platform is designed to incorporate all of that functionality all in one unified platform. One of the things that we really haven't talked about in a meaningful way is this notion of how do we make sure that domains are not left behind, uh, particularly as we think about the new TLDs. Um, I think that the domain industry has a very interesting opportunity to come together as an industry, as a set of professionals, and align the new TLDs to the smart city movement. Now, most of you will probably come into contact with various smart city initiatives in your cities and if you haven't, you will soon. This is going to become a global phenomena. I believe 2017 is the year of the smart city. At the same time, 
you know that there have been a lot of initiatives around single sign-on. Uh, the most successful is probably Facebook Connect, but nobody really uses it for serious transactions. Uh, this is really where uh, we have an opportunity to actually deliver on something that is, as of yet, uh, unfulfilled, which is to say single sign-on uh, for the world. Um, importantly, though, uh, as we look at this uh, emerging category of uh, sharing economy initiatives like uh, Uber and Airbnb and others, is this idea that says we don't want to just create monoliths uh, that have winner-take-all approaches to their economic model, driving commissions ever higher. We want to do it in a manner that is designed to let everybody benefit. And the academic term for this is a big one called platform cooperativism. You hear about that a bit more. Uh, domains, therefore, are a means to an end, which is we allow individual stakeholders to sovereignly operate their individual domains for the purposes of powering smart cities. So I want to give you a little introduction to a case study called Smart London. I'm going to hand it over to Mike to give you some details uh, about how this works. Uh, Smart London uh, is a partnership. Uh, our whole approach is multi-stakeholder. We work with the different groups within an organization uh, that are responsible for the success of a city. We want to make cities uh, smart. We want to make cities uh, more capable, more successful. Now, Dot London is along for the ride in a very important way uh, in that it becomes a replicable template. Uh, the whole idea is every citizen that is a legal resident, uh, every uh, business that is a licensed business uh, gets not only a Dot London, but they actually have a verified digital identity that is appended to that Dot London extension. Um, it is in part funded by uh, London and Partners. Uh, Dan Hill sends his regard. He couldn't be with us today, uh, but uh, it's been uh, wonderful to work with. Uh, as has MMX, uh, Toby Hall, who's here in the hall today, no pun intended. Uh, and uh, the big thing for you as uh, stakeholders in these new registries is that as we enter into this partnership with the registry operator, we are guaranteeing a certain volume of registrations. In other words, we will stick our neck out and guarantee that the initiatives that we do together translate into registrations and adoption. So with that, let me turn it over to Mike uh, to, to comment about uh, the platform. Thank you, Rob. So a vision is nothing without the ability to execute. So what I'd like to do today is give you a, a preview of our Smart City platform, uh, which will be officially launched at our event in London uh, next month, which we invite you all to, uh, to attend. So when we designed the Smart City platform, we recognized early on that really there were three things we had to tackle. We needed to create an environment where local citizens could engage with each other about topics that matter to them and their community. We needed to provide a way for people to explore cities, find local businesses. And we needed to create a true local search, which meant that you could find all these local businesses and services uh, instead of searching for where you physically are, you want a local search based on the city site that you're actually interacting with. The live side of the uh, site is all about the social inclusion, where Facebook today has become photos of food, family, holidays, and cats playing piano. We wanted to create something that was a little bit more real, that allowed people to raise issues that were relevant to them, discuss, contribute, and even create projects that actually allow them to make a difference in their community. Rob mentioned that one of the concepts behind our platform is the global identity, which means that wherever you are in the world, if you're connected to a, a digital town smart city portal, we know who you are. You have a verified identity, you also have a reputation, and we know a little bit about you. So we can start to personalize the services that we provide to you. We also have the ability to directly link to that profile, encouraging people to adopt the .london domain, for example, uh, John Smith could register johnsmith.london or he could pay for a, a premium domain and be the one and only john.london which would access his profile and his, uh, represent his online presence. We don't have a huge amount of time but I wanted to highlight a few of the features within the live section of the product. Um, a project I think is really exciting. If there's a local park that needs some renovation, if there is a graffiti that needs addressing, this allows a citizen to create that project online. People can contribute in terms of time, money, resources, and the community can come together to actually address this issue. Uh, people can raise issues that affect them and open online discussions. They can even contact the local government and say, hey, there's potholes in my street that need fixing. There's lights that aren't working. Um, so, you know, it really is a social inclusion platform. 
On the other side, we have our Explore platform, and Rob talked a little bit about the importance of the verticals. The Explore platform brings together hotels, events, activities. It brings together online stores. It brings together services and businesses. And rather than just provide a static list of those businesses for you to contact, we're actually building out solutions that actually allow them to have a relevant online presence with very little technical expertise. Rob mentioned our Smart Dot Menu product that will be launched at the uh, National Restaurant Association in Chicago. And this allows any small restaurant to have an online presence that includes their menu, their table reservations, even online food ordering. We have a dot law product which will be coming out in June, which gives a you know a very classy online presence to any legal firm anywhere in the world. We have an e-commerce platform. Uh, we will have London dot shop uh, live very soon, and we're allowing anybody from a market trader to a high street store to get a credible online presence uh, and encourage people to to shop locally. And we have a very mature lodging product, um, which allows you to search for hotels within the city, but most importantly we can directly contract those local hotels, which means the hotelier is not only getting a larger share of that booking revenue, they're actually getting paid quicker as well. So as Rob mentioned, you know, we're really going after some of these larger organizations and trying to encourage people to invest locally in their economy. Um, I've talked about search, so I will, I will skip over that, but local search is something that people haven't really tackled properly. Our platform will let you search for anything from trampolines to pizza, and it will highlight the local businesses that can support you ahead of the, uh, the global businesses. Um, I certainly won't spend any time on this, but I guess the, you know, the relevance here is we're building a platform. Once we've delivered Smart.London, we're going to be rolling this out across the globe. We have a cloud-based, cutting-edge, scalable platform that allows us to do that very, very quickly and efficiently. Uh, Rob talked about the smart wallet. Having that global single sign-on is key. Um, reputation is key, making people feel welcome when they enter a business um, and having a form of payment for small businesses where there aren't large transaction charges. A smart wallet allows you to transact with no charges. And finally, but, but not least, um, we're going to open up our API to the world. We've thought of some really cool things we can do with this technology, but we're sure that when we launch our hackathon in London, we're going to find that... Um, there are ideas we haven't even dreamt of that people were developed again using this global single sign, <coughs> using this reputation, and using this um, this form of payment. And finally, if I can very quickly, uh, we've just agreed a deal with a company called Tagpoint to put these beacons in local restaurants, which means when you walk into a restaurant, the restaurant will know who you are, they'll know how often you visit them, and they'll even know your dietary preferences, so you can feel welcomed as a as a known individual when you walk into a business. Yeah, thank you. And important on the on the uh, tag point solution, uh, you as an individual are sovereignly in control over which information about you is shared with whom. Uh, so it's all about uh, individual sovereignty and uh, enabling this type of uh, innovation, but in a way where the user's in control, uh, the system isn't abusing uh, trust. So let's talk about uh, adoption and, and monetization. And I don't want to drill through this uh, too in depth. Uh, this will be in the slide deck for anyone who wants to know. The short of it is that many of you will have uh, domain names that are premium, uh, that you don't want to uh, uh, take out of circulation for the purposes of being able to sell them. Uh, we are saying, by all means, sell them. Sell them for 100,000 euros. Uh, but while you're waiting to sell them, use them, right? So London.law, as an example, is probably a 100,000 British pound uh, domain when it sells but use it in the meantime. And so that's the principle. And we have a strategy for how you can use it, sell it, and then uh, replace it with a generic one like london.search.law. Uh, very briefly on verified identity. Uh, verified digital identity is, is a huge unsolved problem. I've actually been thinking about uh, verified identity since in 2007. Uh, I've been involved with federated identity projects going back uh, almost a decade now. Um, and the whole idea of portable reputation uh, is, is a hugely important uh, solution area where we have an opportunity to deliver great innovation. Uh, if you're an eBay seller and you're good, there's a benefit within eBay, but you can't take your eBay seller rating with you. Um, we're really focused on how do you create a federated and shared and portable framework to accrue reputation and then take it with you. 
Um, it also means that you can go from generic uh, non-important polls to ultimately delivering on online voting, something that a few governments around the world have embraced but is generally uh, not done. And last but not least is this notion of personal accountability. If you're a good citizen of the world, you should benefit from being a good citizen, maybe paying less for renting an apartment or maybe getting access to certain benefits that are accruing to somebody who's gone out of their way to be a citizen of um, positive repute. Uh, and we are partnering with a number of significant biometric organizations uh, to accept uh, their biometric framework as single sign-on. But for parts of the world where they don't have a biometric solution, uh, we have a fallback, and that is a pressure-sealed mailer. You probably have gotten these in your mail from your bank. Um, we have a, a production center in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we will set additional ones up uh, throughout other parts of the world that are capable of fulfilling on-demand uh, secure identity for any uh, participant. So looking ahead, uh, I want to share with you just a very brief case study, uh, smart dot menu, tagline is book local, eat global. We're really talking about how do you blend um, the sharing economy with the conventional economy. Uh, the conventional economy, you, you book a table online, you show up, you, you wait for the menu, you wait for your food, you wait for the bill, and then you wait for your credit card and you hope it wasn't compromised. Um, in the smart menu configuration, it's like the Uber experience applied to dining. But it's also about empowering the sharing economy. Now, we're here in Madrid. If you wanted to go have a meal at an Indian restaurant, I'm not sure maybe there's an Indian restaurant nearby, but there might be an Indian fellow who's a private chef who will set a table for four people at seven o'clock. You show up, your food's been paid for, the food is warm, ready for you to eat, you eat and you leave. Um, the sharing economy is going to transform every industry that we come into contact with. Uh, the dining vertical is no exception. Um, other up up upcoming milestones besides the launch of Smart Menu this month at the National Restaurant Association is, of course, Smart London. Uh, June 13 is the actual presentation date and will also be the start of the hackathon, which runs through the end of the month uh, with the announcement at London Bridge, July the 7th, uh, with celebrity uh, participants all broadcast on London.cam. Uh, we also have uh, a launch event in North America with the American Chamber of Commerce executives um, and uh, another one in Sydney, which is the World Chamber Federation uh, at their annual summit, actually biennial. And then uh, in the Doc Law case, uh, just to give you some flavor of how we're approaching this, I will present at the National Association of Bar Executives um, on August the 8th, um, and uh, they have already embraced the idea that uh, law is a global uh, industry and one that needs global solutions. So every law firm that is accredited uh, bar recognized can get their dot law and only if they are bar recognized can they be on, for example, London dot law, uh, Seattle dot law, Madrid dot law. Um, now, um, we have some unique capability. Uh, some of you know I also run a registrar uh, called uh, Epic uh, and I have been a big advocate of new TLDs. I've gone toe to toe with people like Mike Mann uh, and, and, L and other dot uh, com forever uh, enthusiasts. Uh, I believe in the new TLDs, and I will uh, uh, stand with you shoulder to shoulder advocating that the new TLDs are the future and having great confidence that you uh, pioneering individuals have made a wise bet uh, on the future. Uh, to the extent that you allow us to hold domain names uh, through Epic as a registrar, and you are not required to do this at all, uh, we also operate the privacy proxy service called Anonymize, it's free. Uh, anonymize.com and you are free to uh, make use of that uh, to the extent that you wish to um, safeguard information about who's holding these directory domains in particular. And then last but not least, uh, undeveloped base in Amsterdam, where I'll be tomorrow. Uh, we acquired them, Epic did, and in February it's an online marketplace for uh, domain auctions. We'll be hosting the domain auction in Berlin at Domain in Europe next week um, and quite a lot of capability there. So in closing, uh, you know, this is about winning together. Uh, we think that it's critically important at this juncture, at the time of the mainstreaming of the smart city movement, uh, to create uh, popular acceptance of the new TLDs as part of the organizing framework that makes the web intuitive, personalized, and secure. Uh, we think that the city TLDs uh, play a, a very critical role in that, uh, and that the smart city CIOs 
uh, that are having a mandate to deliver smart city solutions. You can deliver them super low hanging fruit. Uh, to the extent that there's a city domain that you would like to use, then use it. To the extent that you haven't gotten approved uh, for your city extension, waiting uh, far too long for ICANN to approve it, uh, something that I will also advocate be accelerated. Uh, we have 23,000 city domains, including very big cities like Nashville and San Diego and so forth and so on. Uh, you are welcome to make use of those city domains in anticipation of when your city extension becomes available. So you can just drop the .city, grandfather all of the people who previously had a .city, and they will then also be able to get started using your domain, and you'll have immediate traction of your new extension. Um, the entire platform is transaction funded. Nobody here has to write a check. Uh, to the extent that you do write a check, it is for marketing and development, uh, and it is to be returned dollar for dollar, euro for euro, um, in full, based on uh, us guaranteeing a volume of registrations to assure successful uptake during the launch phase. The end result is frictionless engagement uh, through single sign-on, and very importantly, long-term stickiness from people who have invested in establishing reputation. If you're John Dutt London and you've got a lot of credibility uh, in your uh, digital presence, you're more than likely going to maintain that for a very long time. So as such, we give registrants the option of securing a forever extension. They can register a domain name through Epic as a registrar. We give you the option as a registrant to register a forever renewal. Uh, of course, the registries allow us 10 years, so we're essentially serving as a trust on behalf of uh, the registrant to maintain that domain renewal after uh, year 10. Uh, so just as we're providing a privacy proxy to serve as the trustee of your identity, we can also provide the framework for uh, perpetual renewal of the domain. Uh, that, that's it. Uh, anybody who would like to get a copy of the slide deck immediately, just email robertdigitaltown.com. Otherwise, we will uh, coordinate with our lovely hosts. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we'll make the slide deck available uh, online that way. Some, some questions. So uh, the one question is um, your presentation in London is on the 13th of June, isn't yes. it? Yes. So where you invite everybody to yeah, come? Yeah, uh, so by all means, uh, you're invited. Uh, we've got a fantastic program coming together, some fantastic speakers. Uh, in fact, uh, we would be uh, uh, happy to also include uh, this group uh, not only as attendees, but also as an official sponsor, no charge. Uh, we believe in your vision, we applaud your initiative, uh, and would like to go out of our way to recognize you uh, for your, your tremendous effort uh, as volunteers. Okay, then um, questions from the audience. This is one that <coughs> work uh, a number of GOG-related TLDs. And uh, I would like to know if the basic um, paradigm is to identify the users that go, that use those um, uh, uh, resources, and you know, who controls those user identifiers. You know, for instance, you mentioned people walking into a restaurant and automatically being identified. Uh, now, of course, somebody must identify that. Is that the single place? Is that you? Who are the people who actually manage the individuals who are in the system? Yeah, yeah so I, I guess the, the main point there is around privacy. So um, if I understand your question correctly, so you know, Digital Town will own and manage those identities. We will be the identity authority. Um, and as such, we will put all the necessary controls in place to be compliant. I know we were talking today, you were talking later about European compliance. Uh, we have a number of things we have to comply with around PCI as well. Um, so we will, we will own that data and we will protect that data. And we will give individuals the control to decide exactly what is exposed and what is not exposed um, and who that is exposed to. And by the way, by virtue of partnering with municipalities, with national governments, uh, we are very proactively uh, taking this approach of delivering on something that they all want, uh, but nobody is capable at this time of, of delivering that solution. So it's a true public-private partnership on a global scale. Uh, 
Hi, it's Constantine with Dot Music. Um, I have a question. Uh, I see it's very geo focused. I know it's a GT geo TLD group. Um, is there any other usage? I'll use music as an example. I saw a hotel was a uh, short an example of, of hotel. Uh, could there be other usages for other yeah. types of strings? And yeah. if so, can you give, for example, for music, what yeah. what it could look like? Yep. Okay, so uh, the music uh, is a wonderful vertical. Um, Constantine, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but I was in Nashville a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we're launching Nashville.city. Uh, you may have come into contact with a guy by the name of Butch Spiridon, who's kind of a legend uh, there in Nashville. You go into his office. It's like a museum of uh, uh, rock memorabilia, country memorabilia. It's quite the thing. I recommend checking in with him. He runs the Nashville DMO, uh, Destination Marketing Organization. Singularly responsible, I think, for the booming real estate market that is going on there and the uh, highly priced $500 a night uh, hotels that are always booked sometimes weeks, months in advance. Um, so Dot Music is, is, is one of my favorite upcoming verticals. Uh, we may be stuck with using Dot Band just because Dot Music isn't delegated yet. Hello, I can, let's get with it. Um, so, you know, I think Dot Music is fascinating because of this whole notion of uh, disintermediating uh, the conventional um, distribution framework uh, that is frankly robbing uh, a lot of the indie artists of their ability to be prosperous in producing their productions. Uh, and by that I mean not just, for example, uh, music for download, uh, which is obviously a direct opportunity, but also, for example, uh, ticket sales, memorabilia sales, uh, merchandise sales, and connecting uh, music enthusiasts uh, to, the to the producers of that product uh, directly. So you can imagine having a, a giant network, single sign-on, where every artist, every, every individual band member, uh, they can all have their dot music, and they can all use it uh, to be able to produce their craft and to monetize their craft uh, in a way that um, creates value, uh, both for the community that it serves, but also for the producers of the content uh, themselves. Okay, maybe maybe last question. Um, okay. Hi, this is Sarah from Istanbul. So I was wondering, how do you monitor the illegal activities or pornographic activities if they like put yeah. them on the content? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, I'd like to know also, do you give any permissions or management uh, to, to top level domains, the owners? Can we manage? Can we manage the platform? Yeah. Okay. So uh, first part, uh, let me address the issue of uh, illegal, uh, restricted content. Uh, one of the things, of course, with regards to age, uh, is the ability to control a uh, person's ability to access content that they're by age uh, not permitted to access. Verified digital identity obviously provides a framework for being able to allow allow someone to say. Uh, I'm authorized, I'm anonymous, I don't allow you to see my identity, but I allow you to see uh, the country of residence and I allow you to see my age. So the ability to provide um, uh, controlled access uh, while at the same time preserving uh, personal anonymity and privacy is equally applicable in casting a poll and also equally applicable as it decides as to who accesses cer certain types of media. So obviously we are very much uh, advocates of um, uh, a sustainable, viable framework to be able to control such problems. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we also recognize that um, there should be safeguards against persons uh, uploading objectionable content or selling objectionable merchandise. And the ability for the community at large to be able to flag an item as inappropriate, uh, for that to be temporarily taken down pending review, um, is something that we have designed in the platform uh, to be um, an orderly um, solution to an intractable problem. You can't police everything, uh, and if you put all kinds of barriers between when someone uploads and when it's visible, uh, that's not really the way that the web works today. Uh, but it should be possible for the crowd to be able to self-police, and you'll see a lot of emphasis on self-policing, personal accountability, using crowd awareness to solve problems. Um, civic policing is a huge area. You're going to see a lot of things uh, happening in that arena in the coming uh, months and years. 
The second question I think you raised was really about the role that the TLD operator can play in operating the platform. And absolutely. So for the example of .Istanbul, uh, I'm not, I love Turkey. I, I love it every time more when I visit it. Uh, I was just in Istanbul a month and a half ago. Uh, and uh, but I don't speak Turkish, and, and so to the extent that we could hand over the platform uh, to uh, a, a Turkish operating authority to be able to operate uh, the platform for Turkey, uh, that would be very attractive. And in the spirit of public-private partnership, not only is it uh, possible, but it's desirable. Uh, the way this platform is designed to operate, uh, to the extent that there is a, uh, a licensee for uh, San Diego.city uh, or uh, .Istanbul, the, the platform is designed that you can actually operate it and sell it. So to the extent that you, you bundle your extension with a platform that makes it useful for generating transactions, you're going from being a registry to being a platform for a smart economy. And that platform becomes valued no longer as a function of the value of the namespace, which has some theoretical value, it becomes valued as a multiple of, of operating reality in the form of transactions and users and visitors and other metrics that normal business buyers can evaluate um, and, and decide to offer to purchase. So I think actually from the standpoint of uh, privately operated registries, I don't think there's a better piece of news that you could have heard this week than the idea that you can turn your domain extensions into scalable businesses that can be valued and ultimately acquired by persons who might be able to take it further than the, the, than the distance that you carried it.